So let's look at uh, one more here. Um, I picked a shorter one to try to wrap this up around the uh, one hour mark. This uh, Duarte Riaz, this guy, I used to see him around a lot and now I don't really see him at all and he just randomly popped in and joined my game the other day. So, um, you know, I don't really have a ton of reads on him. It's probably been like, seems like almost a year since I played him last. Not much we can do here um, on this turn. Uh, I don't think check raising is really an option. I don't think we represent that much. I guess ace four, ace eight, pocket fours. Um, and check calling, I think, is just leaking money there. I could lead this turn, but I think he's checking back like a decent amount of like 10x here and pocket jacks and stuff like that. Um, so I think I would prefer a check call and just capture like his total bluffs and then like when he has like his pocket sixes or three deuce or something like that. That being said, I don't really love his check behind on that flop with pocket eights. I mean, yeah, it's whatever, but I mean, I, th I think it's in terms of his pot control range, I think it's better to check back like a jack 10 there and then just bet your pocket eights and get like, you know, a hand like I had to fold that has like good equity against you. I mean, this would be a, a decent board to, to triple off on, um, but not really knowing a ton about the guy. Um, just decided to make the more standard play of just giving up there. Uh, definitely a mandatory turn bet here. I think we can wrap a lot of like 8 9, 8 10, all kinds of semi, semi bluffs and draws. Um, and I think we have the best hand like 95% of the time. So good uh, turn card or river card to bet to. Uh, I think in his eyes, it looks like, you know, the board ran off bad for him. If he has a six or a seven, so I think that increases the amount of times that he's going to make a hero call here. So I like betting in kind of a standard about like a 145 ish or something. I think this is a little big. I guess this is okay in the sense that we get more value when like, I don't think he's ever full in a king here. So I think that's okay. But I think most of his range there is probably like more weighted towards like six and seven X and stuff. Just a little speculative three bet. I, I kind of have a thing where I, against regulars anyway, like I don't like my first three bet to be for value. So um, if you're ever playing me, then that's your money in the bank. No, I mean, I should switch it up, but um, he four bets right away, and I think I remember this as four bet being extremely low, so I mean, it's not really anything to do there. I see some people calling that situation, but <clears throat> I don't think that's going to be a winning play, especially against a tight four better. Pretty nutty flop. I mean, we could bet uh, a third pot here. I think that'd be definitely be reasonable um, to bounce at times when we're doing it with like our more airy hands, airy part of our range. Uh, you know, our jack six suited and stuff like that. But since this guy I knew like didn't know anything about me and we hadn't played in forever, I think that's like whatever. I think that's as close to optimal as you'll get. Um, decent board to check raise here, I think, or check call. I don't really check call as much with these ace high hands as other people do. I just I feel like in this day and age when people are just double and triple barreling all the time, I think getting a showdown is becoming increasingly harder as each day goes by, so um, I don't love the check call. I mean, obviously with the ace of clubs, it prevent, you know, presents 20% like, you know, of the time, 22% of the time, we'll be able to call a turn bet, but even then, it, you know, I I'd usually, just philosophically, I'd rather play the role of the aggressor rather than just trying to always get to showdown and forcing things and whatever, so... Um, I think that's an okay play. And some people might say, yeah, he folded he folded uh, a worse hand there, but I don't... I remember Phil Galfon talking about that one time and just about how, like, unimportant that really is and that kind of um, 
it made a lot of sense to me. It's like, yeah, they had a worse hand, but you're out of position. So um, what's preferable from that standpoint? This was the main hand of the match, and it was kind of interesting. I do something that I don't normally do, and I guess the result of this hand is why. Um, you know, I decided to lead a, like a pretty strong hand, and we're not shallow enough where I'm going to bet three bet it. You know, I might th bet three bet a hand like an ace nine, or like pocket tens that I would very occasionally flat, or like a jack five of hearts, but. Um, Anyway, I, this probably isn't like the most ideal hand to lead with. Anyway, he raises and I stuck with my plan and decided to call. Um, good and a bad turn. I mean, I think that flush draws make up a large part of his range. I mean, but I think most of his range at this point is just air. Um, because, you know, I mean, what do you do when people donk on the flop? I mean, the default is just to bump it up because they usually just have gut shots or like second pair type hands that they can put a lot of pressure on you with with position. So. I mean, obviously my plan here is just to check raise all in. I, mean, I thought about just leading or like shipping or something, but um, mm, I'm trying to think of that'd be better. I think it's probably better just to let him bet like his total bluffs. And if he had a hand like, you know, a king seven, and then he decides to keep up with his story on the turn. And then king on the river, I think I like always have the best hand, but I think it's a spot where he's like, he's never paying off. I guess if he had a hand like a jack nine, maybe he would call like a 335 chip bet. Um, but I also thought like it would be kind of irresistible for him to bet the king if he has like ace two here or something. Um, he has something weird and then he overbets the pot substantially. I mean, not substantially, but by about 300 chips. And I was just really lost here. Um, I took all flushes out of his range. I just don't think that's really possible. Um, I took 7, 10, and 5, 7 out of his range um, sets. So... Mm, the only hand that made sense to me is if he had a king 6 or a king 9 that he decided to check the turn with. It was a pretty scary turn for that kind of hand. Um, and then he realized that like my range was capped and I can't really have a flush here. Um, so I decided to like combination of things that, and my hand is like so underrepresented that I think this would be a good play with air. So conversely, I think it's probably a call on my end. Um, I mean, the results kind of threw me for a loop and <clears throat> not only did he have a flush, but he had an extremely low flush. Uh, which I just totally disagree with. I mean, obviously, it's flop play is beyond standard, but on the turn, I just think it's kind of horrific to check there. I mean, there's so many cards that kill your action, and if I do have a hand like I do, I have four outs. Um, or if I like had a 10-7 or a 5-7 that I was bet calling, um, if another heart comes off, it ruins your action. I mean, there's so many bad things that can happen. I mean, I guess it turned out good for him, but I think it's important not to be results oriented like that when you win or you lose um, so I don't like his turn play the question is what do we think about the river play um, I don't really like it either because again like my hand is like totally underrepresented I mean obviously if he knows like this type of hands in my range then it's okay but I think it like looks like I have like a 6-7 here or like at best, like the, the hand I have or like, you know, something similar, like a 10-9. So I guess we have to look at it from the perspective of like, he wants, he thinks he looks really polarized by betting the king and that's why, but um, it's about as deep as I can take it. And I, I, I think the only mistake anybody made in this hand was him not betting the turn and then me calling the river. Um, I mean, it's such a perfect storm for him to bet the over bet there that I think it's pretty much a mandatory call. So hope you guys liked the video. Uh, look forward to making more. I will talk to you next time. Bye.